Matthew chapter 11, the verse number 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Shake about ten people and tell them there is a voice in the wilderness. Are you here tonight? Are you here tonight? Yes. There's, uh, shake about ten. There's a voice. There's a voice in the wilderness. You, there's a voice. You, 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 there's a voice in the wilderness. Uh, yeah. There's a voice in the wilderness. Now, come on, take your seats in the presence of the Lord. How many of you are ready for tonight? <laughs> yeah. I said, how many are, are ready for tonight? Now, after going through that dimension and understanding that when God gives birth to something, he brings the shepherd. So we looked at when the shepherds come and they come to shepherd the birthing of God. We now went on further to talk about the wise men are coming. Uh, it is interesting that after 12 years, we do not have a record anymore of Jesus' life. So for the next 18 years, he enters into obscurity. We, we can't find him. But within the framework of Jesus' birth, there were some connections before he finally appeared. Are you following? So at the age of 12, we see him exhibiting some powerful things. However, we don't hear of him again until the age of 30. But for you to understand why, you must go back into uh, the, the, the time preceding his manifestation to know that in the dimension of God, there are certain things that God has set in place for your life. It means that to manifest is a process. Manifestation is not a sudden event. No, sir. Manifestation is a process. Even though in Acts chapter number 2, the Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come and there came into the room a mighty rushing wind, you should understand that in the feast, how many of you are aware when we did the seven feast of the Lord? Come on, don't, don't leave your mind at home. Come on now. The seven feast of the Lord. Uh, when we talk about the Feast of Weeks, which is the Feast of Pentecost, it is 50 days from the Passover. When Jesus arose from the dead, he spent 40 days walking on earth and explaining his ministry from, the Bible said, from Moses to the prophets. He explained the things concerning him. Now we find the same Jesus um, leaving and telling his disciples, wait in the upper room. Now, according to the word of God, they waited in the upper room for 10 days. If you add 10 to 40, you have 50, which is pent, pent five, pentagon five, penta five, pentecos five. So 50 means that they were now ready. Now, the problem with you and I is that your prophets have told you that God works suddenly. It's a lie. God it's, it's, it's not an anxious God. So God works by plan. He doesn't work by emotion. God works by plan. He doesn't work by need. Uh, come on. Come on. So, so now, even though the Holy Spirit had been promised by Joel, in Joel 2 verse 28, that the Spirit was going to come, the process to bring in the Spirit could not be overlooked. In other words, they had to go through the prophetic process of waiting in the upper room for 10 days. And they had to walk with Jesus for 40 days. If you add 40 to 10, it gives you 50. So it means that even though the suddenness is recorded in Acts, there was a process that led to the suddenness. It means that God will not suddenly come into your life. But what will look suddenly would have been a process that started from your mother's womb. Uh, come on now. <laughs> Come on now. It's a process that started from where you were conceived. It's a process that started from where you were, you were given birth to. It is a process that will start from where you are dedicated until your manifestation. I prophesy that you will not be deceived to jump the process and manifest prematurely. There are marriages 
that came in but they are premature there are ministries that came in but they are premature a premature life will not have the immunity to fight the attacks of the devil of the world and of the enemies of your destiny but our prophesy tonight may the process come into alignment with your life and your destiny that when they say where did you come from God would have taken you through all the processes so that your destiny and your life will have a history. Your destiny and your life will have a recipe that you will not be a sudden miracle. Sudden miracles disappear suddenly. It takes the process of the prophetic to secure your life, to make your life meaningful, to make your life impactful, to make your life transferable, you should have gone through the process. I prophesy tonight that may you enter your process. That when you appear, even though it will be sudden to the world, behind the scenes, you were in the process of God. When the world did not know of you, you were in the pro. Can we work tonight? Uh, come on now. I said, can we work tonight? It's interesting that what God will do with Jesus' life, the connection begins prophetically in the womb. The connection started in Luke one twenty six. Now in the sixth month, the same angel that went to a man called Zechariah in the temple, now the angel is not visiting a temple, he's visiting a city, a prophesy. In our times, angels will not be only in temples. They will be in cities. I see angels coming into your house. In Luke 1, the verse 26, the process had begun. So I bring it back. The process, a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Six months after the conception of John the Baptist, Jesus, mother is visited. It means that those who you are connected to in destiny, when God is preparing your life, he will prepare the things that must come ahead of your life before you are even conceived. Now, come on now. John was conceived six months before Jesus' mother was visited. It means that the system that will usher Jesus into manifestation was conceived before Jesus. I don't, I, I, I'm going to say it again. Many of you think that your life is late, but the system that will cause you to manifest, God is conceiving it now. John was not conceived after Jesus because John must come before Jesus. Prayer must come before your manifestation. Fasting must come before your manifestation. So right now, all the conceptions does not seem right. But God is building a connection. Six months, the angel went to Mary. And Mary will receive the message of the conception. Now, when the angel speaks to Mary, and we jump to verse 36 of the same chapter, 36 of Luke chapter 1. Now, after the angel spoke to Mary, he said that your life cannot be the same. Now, I will have to introduce you to another system that will keep your conception intact. Somebody hearing me? Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative. Now, I prophesy, it means when God, follow, when, when, when God comes into a place to bring the message of conception, God will always connect you to those who are more pregnant than you. Now, now, now we, we're getting deeper. It means if God is going to usher your life, now watch this, God is going to bring you to people. If you're going to be a billionaire, God will bring you to people who are millionaires than you. Now, the problem with the world is when they see people who are higher than them, instead of connecting and learning, they become jealous, they become bigotry, and they become envious. But I prophesy tonight that before you see John baptizing Jesus, the connection did not start at the Jordan. The connection started in the womb. 
this night when I was preparing, the Lord said to me, my son, connect with your John the Baptist in the womb before you meet your Judas in Jerusalem. I'm going to say it again. Many people, you need to connect to your John the Baptist in the womb. He said, now Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. What is God saying? I, am, I have given you a son that you are not expecting. But there was a woman somewhere who had expected a son for a long time and did not have it. It means what God was saying is, in the lesson of the spirit, I must bring you to those who have lost hope. For you to know that I am the God that can bring hope to those who have lost hope. I am the God that can make an old lady get pregnant. It means that God was telling Mary, I, I don't want you to take what I've done in your life for granted. So I'm bringing you to how somebody has prayed their whole life to see what I have given to you when you did not expect. Let me repeat. Mary had received a baby that she did not pray for. And there is a tendency, ladies and gentlemen, for when God gives you something that you did not pray for, there is a tendency for you to misuse it. There is a tendency for you to abuse it because you did not contribute. Uh, God said to Mary, for you to appreciate that you have a baby, I need to bring you to the barren woman whose, whose husband was actually a priest. It means that their generation altar was the altar of Levi, which is the altar of God because in the days of Moses when the Lord shouted who is on the Lord's side the Bible said it was Levi that stood and said we are on the Lord's side so their altar was not a satanic altar it was an altar of the priest God is saying your husband was a priest he served the altar of priesthood he had served the altar from his childhood he had become the chief priest in his neighborhood yet he didn't have a child I don't want Mary to abuse what I have given to him said God so God brought Mary to the place of letting you know that sometimes what I give to you when you have not prayed has been somebody's prayer their lifetime that sometimes Alex ah, you have an auditorium there are people that have prayed for thousands of hours and they are still looking for a veranda to start a church so God did not send her to the beauty parlor she took her to the lessons of the spirit and the lesson that Mary had to learn is that what I have received without praying somebody has prayed their whole life and they have now received it I promise her may the wisdom for you not to abuse what the Lord has given to you for free somebody has been praying for years what God has given to you on a silver platter somebody has been fasting for years may that wisdom come upon your life you married with no money in your pocket somebody is fasting just for a proposal I pray that you not abuse your marriage I promise I you have started a business somebody has been praying for 10 years for lack of employment but God has not given you employment you have employed others Mary 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 I'm taking you to the house of Elizabeth so that you don't abuse what I'm giving you. Alex, 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 I'm taking you to churches that are the best sign of the desert. So when you speak and New York hears you, you will not abuse the anointing on your life. Sound the air! So God will take her to that lesson. What is the lesson? I'm the God that can do the impossible. And I'm the same God that can do the unexpected. Uh, in the life of Elizabeth, a child was impossible. In the life of Mary, a life was the, the baby was unexpected. In the life of Elizabeth, a baby was impossible. In the life of Mary, a baby was not expected. I prophesy. The God that does the impossible, the same God will do the unexpected. I know you are not expecting marriage is coming. I know you are not expecting breakthrough is coming. 
I know you are not expecting favor, but it's coming. Uh, and to those who think it's impossible, God is sending you to the house of Elizabeth for you to learn the lesson. Uh, it is never too late and it is never too early. It is the will of God. Uh, it can come when you are not expecting uh, and it will come when you have given up. Uh, I prophesy, may that dimension of God be activated. My God, the meeting of the womb. So Mary, the Bible says, will go uphill. He had to travel. The next verse says, he will go uphill. It means he had to take the steps. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country. It means for you to learn that a virgin can hold the conception. You must learn of the barren that could not give birth. So the lesson to the virgin who has conceived is the lesson of the barren who has had a child. You, you, don't, you don't get what I'm saying. It means for every virgin move in your life. God will send you to a barren system that has given birth. No, 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 no. I said, uh, somebody said, man of God, can we connect you to some preaching appointments abroad? Uh, because you have what it takes. No, sir. Uh, if Alex is going to conceive a baby Jesus, even though Alex is not experienced to that level, God will send us to ministries. Come on now. God will send us to ministries that are old. God will send us to ministries that have stayed in the priesthood but they have not had the fruit of the priesthood. God will send us to generals who never made it to the front line but they still kept the faith. Zechariah and Elizabeth did not give up on God. Zechariah was still serving as a priest. Are you here tonight? Zechariah was still serving as a priest. Are you here tonight? Zechariah was still serving as a priest. Because even though God had not come through for them, he, she, he still kept the priest. And Elizabeth still stayed in the marriage. I prophesy your story will become a lesson to the coming generation. Mary was the coming generation. The problem with the coming generation is that the blessing had come fast. And they did not know how to handle it. But the lesson that the new generation must learn that what we have received now has been the prayer of the old generation. I prophesy. I said I prophesy. May arrogance leave our life. May we respect the churches that came before us. May we respect the orthodox churches. May we respect uh, the Presbyterian church. The Methodist church. The Baptist church. The, uh, the Roman Catholic church. The Apostolic church. The Pentecostal church. Because what we have received as charismatics and the prophetics is what they prayed for. They prayed for the gifts of the Spirit. The Bible said they prayed for the gifts of the Spirit. History has it that William Samuel in 1903 on the street called Azusa prayed five hours for two and a half years and it bet the charismatic church what you think you are enjoying now was the prayer of somebody God is sending Mary to the hill country to meet Elizabeth so that we will not abuse our calling I prophesy for every Mary there must be an Elizabeth connection I prophesy may your Elizabeth be open to you tonight I prophesy may you travel uphill I said may you travel uphill to see your Elizabeth son yeah The connection of the womb. Now Mary will stay there. The Bible said, and he entered the house of Zachariah and greeted Elizabeth. The meeting of the womb. The transaction of the womb. And it happened, watch this, and it happened. When Mary and when Elizabeth had the greetings, he had the greetings. Is this guy dead or is he still here? He had the greetings. He had the greetings. Of Mary and the Bible said the baby the baby leaped in her womb the baby 
lived in their home. Many of you, even though your wives have been pregnant before, many of you don't know how it takes. But I'm a student of life. I know sometimes when my wife was pregnant and the baby will not move for a while, my wife will begin to poke the baby. Because one of the ways to know your baby is still inside and is alive and well, the baby must move. But all this while, the baby was not moving. Many of you have ministries, but the ministries have stopped moving. Many of you have gifts, but the gift is not moving. You have a bank account. It has never given you a let. Who am I prophesying? For the past three months. But when you find your Elizabeth, Mary, Mary did not pray. The Bible said he greeted. It means when the anointing is operating, when you say good morning, any satanic force will give way. When you say good afternoon, it will not be a salutation. It will be a spirit transfer. The Bible said when she had the greetings of Mary, the baby in her womb leaped and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I've got to do some work here. The Bible said the baby of Elizabeth leaped. It means that the, the respect the respect that this new generation will give to the old generation will cause the babies in them to leap one more time. Your grandmother had a dream, but the dream is dead. As we respect your grandmother, the baby in her womb is going to leap for joy. Your father had a dream. Your father is dead and gone. But the memory of the, the just, the Bible says is blessed. Prayer up, rise up. The dreams of our forefathers are leaping for joy. The dreams of our great grandfathers, who am I prophesying to? The dreams of the praying men in our families, they are leaping for joy. Our mothers wish pastors will come into the family. That baby is leaping for joy. They call prophets in their prayer. That baby is leaping for joy. Now the Bible said, Elizabeth, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Say tonight, say tonight, say tonight, the container will be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Luke chapter 1, the verse number 15, the Bible said, the angel said to the, to the father, the angel said in Luke 1, the verse 15, he will be great in the sign of the Lord. He shall not drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Ghost. Where? Even from the mother's womb. So all this while, John was waiting for the baptism of the Spirit. And at this time, when Mary came and he saluted Elizabeth, the Bible said, he said, the Bible declares that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Because God cannot fill the baby without filling the womb. God, I repeat, will not fill the baby without filling the womb. It means the container received the Holy Ghost. And the container affected the content from tonight. Your body received the Holy Ghost. It will affect your, your gift. It will affect your marriage. I said from tonight, the anointing is coming in the womb. And it will affect the baby. The Bible said, Elizabeth was the container. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost entered the baby. So the promise of Luke chapter 1, the verse number 15, happened when Mary entered the house of Elizabeth. A prophesied, the new is meeting the old, and the power of God is coming upon it. Your old house is receiving power. Your old ministry is receiving power. Your old marriage is receiving power. Your old body is receiving power. If you believe it, shout, I believe three times. Give the Lord a shout. The baby was filled with the Holy Ghost. 
the mother was filled with the Holy Ghost. It means God is not going to bless prayer hub only by our videos. As God fills the prayer hub, it will enter the chairs. Every anointing of this church is coming to your house. Every territory that the church conquers, you have conquered it. Every breakthrough of the church will be a breakthrough of your life. As dead bodies are coming back to life in the church, every dead thing in your life is coming back to life. I said it's coming back to life. I said it's coming back to life. God is not only filling the prophet. He's not filling the bishop. He's filling the house. And guess what? Anything in the house is receiving the same power. The same power. I'm getting ready to close. I said I'm getting ready to close. Then the mother of John. Elizabeth said in Luke 143. Said why as the mother of my Lord. Come unto me. I prophesy. The highest is coming to you. Angels are coming to you. Greatness is coming to you. Elizabeth you waited for a long time. But Jesus is coming to salute. All the patience you had. Before the breakthrough came. I said he's coming to your house. He's coming to your family. He's coming to your business. If you believe he's sound the air. Now, now we continue in verse 44. He said, as soon as I heard the voice of your greeting sound in my ears, the voice of your greetings, the voice of who? Mary. Sound from the greetings to the ears of who? Elizabeth. The baby leaped. Now there's a mystery here. The transaction was between Mary and Elizabeth. But the transfer affected the baby. Don't let it pass over your head. It was the mother of Jesus, Mary, that greeted Elizabeth. It was Elizabeth that had the greetings. But the leaping was done by the baby. It means... When the two mothers met, they were transacting business for the baby. Come on, when you meet your Elizabeth, what you are saying will affect the next generation. You are not here, come on. Now, now, come on now. It was Mary that greeted Elizabeth. But the effect of the greeting did not only affect Elizabeth, it affected the baby. As we have come to church, I bring you greetings from heaven. The greetings is not going to affect only you. It's affecting your children at home. It's affecting your business. It's affecting your job. It's affecting your office. The transaction was between the mothers. But it affected the baby. From tonight, whatever transaction we have is going to affect the next generation. The Bible said when Abraham met Melchizedek and he paid tithes, the Bible said Levi was in his loins. Abraham gave birth to Isaac. Isaac gave birth to Jacob. Jacob gave birth to Levi. So from Abraham to Levi, it's four generations. But the Bible said, when Abraham met Melchizedek, Levi was at the transaction. But Levi was not present physically because in the realm of the spirit, I can do a transaction that can affect my generation for four times. I prophesy, may your prayers affect your generation four. Ah, may your giving affect your generation four. May your prayer affect your generation sound four. It means spiritual transactions can affect babies in the womb. From tonight, the ministry in your womb, I salute you. The marriage in your womb, I salute you. The finance in your womb, I salute you. And as I salute you, may it affect it in your womb.
We're getting ready to close. So the babies communicated through their mothers. From tonight, your business will communicate to another business. I said from tonight, the babies communicated through their mothers. Because babies in the wombs don't talk. So every action of their mother affected the babies. As you have that ministry in your womb, as you begin to travel in prayer, it is going to affect that in your womb. As you have marriage in your womb, the pastor called for seven days and you came traveling. They called for Wednesday and you are here tonight. It means that baby in your womb will be consistent. That baby in your womb will be a diligent seeker. That ministry in your womb will be diligent. That power in your womb will be diligent. Sound the air. The word said, Mary stayed for three months when she was going into the house. Elizabeth was pregnant for six months. But the next verse says, Mary stayed for three months. Three plus six is nine. So it means Mary was in the house of Elizabeth until birth. It means God will bring you to a place of appreciating that old things can still carry new babies. And God will bring you to a place of learning, of learning that old things can give birth and not die. So Mary was there for the next three months till John was born so that he will see John before he goes back home. I prophesy every testimony that is your lesson, you will see it before you go home. I said you will see it before you go home. So in a, in a big church in Ghana, we are the Mary. When we go to their conference, we are seeing them giving birth to John. Because we are going back to prayer hub to give birth to Jesus. I'm coming again. I said when we visit the old churches, it's Mary visiting Elizabeth. And we are staying there for three months. Anything we see in the great conferences in Accra, we are the Marys in the house of Elizabeth. After we leave, we are going to give birth to our Jesus. I prophesy. Get into the house and see the baby born. Shout yeah. Now the word says, when John was born, there was a struggle. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Because in the conception of John, Kanasuna, Ibala Satakai, in the conception of John, in Luke 1, 19 to 20, when the angel spoke to John's father, Zachariah, he said, and the angel answered and said to him, I'm Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. And who has sent me to speak to you and bring you this great glad tidings. The next verse. But behold, you will be mute. To be muted means your voice will be taken away from you. Because when God is bringing something and your voice is not in alignment. And your voice is not silenced. By your voice you will abort the baby. I'm going to say it again. So God knew that whatever the priest will say will come to pass. Can I help you? Because the way, of, the way you're looking at my face. Sometimes the reason why you become silent for no reason is that God has to make you silent because your confession does not correlate the blessing. And if God does not keep you silent, so sometimes you know people ask you, why are you silent this week? Is something wrong with you? No, God is bringing something. And God has to keep you silent. So that you don't announce it before the time. And so that you don't abort it with your words. Thank God for silence. From tonight, when they ask you, why are you quiet? We don't see you on Facebook. God is bringing a miracle that I cannot talk about. 
God is bringing a breakthrough but my faith is not there yet so God will not cause me to use my voice to abort it I prophesy spiritual silence is coming to any voice that wants to stand against your miracle I silence the witches I silence the necromancers I silence the Sangomas I silence a false prophets I silence jealous men I silence jealous women I silence family relative God was bringing John but his father had to be silent I enter your house anybody against your breakthrough tonight I silence them if God silenced the priest so that John would be conceived tonight any priest in your house that is not in agreement with what God is doing I silence them on the streets of Accra I silence them in the church I silence them from your hometown shout silence shout silence when we fast forward to when john was born luke chapter 1 verse 9 to 64 the bible said then all of a sudden immediately his no let's let's go to 59 this is when so it was on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child they have called him by the name of his father so they had named him zachariah so it would have been Zachariah the Baptist in verse 60. Come on, and verse 60. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. Verse 61. But they said to her, There is no one amongst your relative who is called John. John means the beloved. Said, There's nobody in your family that is beloved because they are all haters. From tonight, you will be the beloved. When your name is mentioned, they'll say, that's my brother. When your name is mentioned, they'll say, that's my father. When your name is mentioned, they'll say, that's my pastor. I prophesy in your family, your name will be unique. The next verse. The next verse. So they made signs, when I'm reading, so they made signs to his father. What shall he be called? The next verse. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. So they all marveled. Verse 64. Immediately his mouth was open. It means what he could not say, he wrote. Write the vision down. Make it plain. That day. Uh, uh, come on. Sometimes we write what we cannot say. So that when we write what we cannot say, and people say what we write, now we have the right. To speak I'm coming again sometimes we may not have the power to say but keep writing I said but keep writing when she wrote the name the Bible said when the people read the name he shall be called John immediately they read what he wrote the mouth of the one that wrote it was open it means whenever we write is a channel for God to increase the volume of our voice. Prayer hub, keep writing. Child of God, keep writing. I said, write down the dream. Write down the vision. Write down the book. Plan your wedding. Write it down. Plan your ministry. Write it down. As men are reading it, God will give you the voice. I prophesy tonight, may you have that voice. I said, may you have that voice. In Luke 176, we enter into the prophecy of Zechariah. He said, And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. You will not be called the prophet of the lowest. You shall be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. I thought everything about God is prepared. And yet God will bring men to prepare his way from tonight why are you in church you just finished seven days you are preparing the way are you going to come on friday yes i'm preparing the way you pray too much 
I am a way preparer. You fast too much. I'm a way preparer. I'm preparing the way. God is coming to Accra. I'm preparing the way. God is coming to Ghana. I'm preparing the way. God is coming to my family. Do I have some preparers of the way? Ah, and he said in the next verse, in verse 77, to give the knowledge, to give knowledge of salvation. May you be a knowledge of salvation. When men hear you, may, be, may they be saved from sickness. May they be saved from disease. May they be saved from calamity. He shall give knowledge. Not the knowledge. Not the knowledge of scam. Not the knowledge of 419. But the knowledge of salvation. Salvation knowledge is here. I said salvation knowledge is here. By the remission of our sins. God is sending salvation. I prophesy as Zechariah came from days of silence to prophesy. I prophesy the same over your life. In verse 79, he said, He shall give light. He shall give light. He shall give light to those that sit in darkness. I prophesy you are a light bringer. You are bringing light to your family. You are bringing light to your ministry. You are bringing light to your generation. You are bringing life to your classmates. You are bringing light to your roommates. You are bringing life to your housemates. Shall I receive it? To guide our feet into peace. It means when he preaches, your feet will enter peace. May your feet move from confusion. May it enter peace. May your feet move from poverty. May it enter peace. May your feet move from calamity. May it enter peace. May your feet move from infirmity. May it enter peace. May your feet move from chaos. May it enter peace. Sound peace. My feet enters. My goodness this is the prophecy this is the prophecy I'm getting ready to close shout close close man of God I can't even say close close man of God now we have come to the making of the voice in Luke 3 the verse number 1 Luke chapter 3 the verse number 1 now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judah, Herod being the tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip being the tetrarch of Eutoria, the region of Trinotitis, Triconitis, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene, verse 2. Whilst Ananias, whilst Ananias, so the first verse talks about the politics. The second verse talks about the religion. I studied political science and religion because in life you have to be political and you have to be religious. So before anything comes, the Bible will give you the politics from tonight. No politics will stop you. So God listed all the politics for you to know that the politicians were still there. But what will happen will happen. I know some of you have party cards, but I care less. What will happen? Abana Sanakaya. Whilst Ananias and Caiaphas were high priests, the word shout the word. Shout the word. Shout the word. The word of the law came to John. The son of Zacharias in the wilderness. I am thinking the word of God is on the pulpit. I'm thinking the word is with those who are wearing suit and tie. I'm thinking the word of God is with those with crucifix over their necks. I'm thinking the word of God is with those with posters in town. I am thinking the word of God is with men of God that travel with convoy. I am thinking the word of God is with men of God on your social media and TV. But the Bible said the word bypass the palace. The word bypass the politics. The word bypass 
bypass the high priest and the word bypass the streets the word bypass the parliament the word bypass the stadium and the bible said the word entered the jungle and was looking for a man in the wilderness i prophesy i don't know where you are now but the word is coming i said the word the word is coming the word is not on the pulpit it's coming in your wilderness it's coming in your place why you are giving up the wilderness is not attractive but the word is coming the wilderness is not nice but the word is coming the wilderness is not on social media but the word is coming the wilderness is not on the poster but the word is coming child of god get ready get ready get ready in your wilderness the word is coming i said in your wilderness the word is coming because in the wilderness is where god will test his people in deuteronomy 8 the verse number 2 God said, I tested you in your wilderness, child of God. You have been delivered, but you are in your wilderness. But the word is coming. Let me pause here a little bit. Every ministry that God will ever bring into manifestation, that ministry will start in the wilderness. I repeat, every ministry that God will bring into manifestation, that ministry will begin in the wilderness. Man of God, I want to start a business. It's in the wilderness. Man of God, I want to get married. It's in the wilderness. Man of God, I feel power. It's in the wilderness. You are anointed. Why is the world not hearing you? I'm in my wilderness. That you shall remember the Lord your God led you the way this 40 years. Where? In the wilderness. God is leading me in my wilderness. John, get ready. You are in the wilderness, but the word is coming. You are in the wilderness, but the word is coming. The wilderness has no bed. It has no supplies because God will be your supply. I said in your wilderness, child of God, the word is coming. I said the word is coming. I said the word is coming. Thank God for the cities. But voices are not made in the cities. They are made in the wilderness. John, stay in your wilderness. You are training your voice. God does not train voices in the cities he trains voices in the wilderness he trains singers in the wilderness he trains preachers in the wilderness he trains generational changes in the wilderness i know you want to be famous but god's fame starts in the wilderness god's power starts in the wilderness ask jesus after his baptism he was led into the wilderness israel walked in the wilderness for 40 years i prophesy get ready the word has come in your wilderness put your hands on your head say lord send me your word in my wilderness If you are clapping, clap well. The making of ministry starts in the wilderness. Because in the wilderness, God prepares the man to the city. City takers are trained in the wilderness from tonight. I, I said city takers are trained in the wilderness. We are coming from the wilderness. Prayer have get ready. We are coming from the wilderness. Child of God, get ready. We are coming from the wilderness. They are driving the nice cars. They are living in the palace. But the word of God is coming from Typha. We are coming from the wilderness. I prophesy tonight. We're getting ready to close. John the Baptist was going to be the voice but you can't be the voice if you can't hear the voice so the word came to John 
before he became the voice. Many people want to be voices without hearing the voice. But God will make you a voice because you hear his voice. I'm coming again. John did not start by speaking. He started by hearing. So James says in James 1.19 he says be quick to hear slow to speak because as a child of God you don't speak your feelings you speak the word of God but you can't speak the word if you can't hear the word John did not speak the word in the wilderness he first heard the word in the wilderness then he spoke the word from the wilderness and he was heard in the city I prophesied tonight stop speaking your feelings speak the word stop speaking your emotions hear the word stop speaking your fear hear the word touch your neighbor say hear the word say hear the word voices are made when men can hear the voice you will not be a voice if you cannot hear the voice i prophesy prayer help as we hear god god is making us a voice a voice in accra a voice in ghana a voice in africa a voice in the world i prophesy tonight by the power of the holy ghost as we hear we speak as we hear we prophesy as we hear we declare from tonight may your ears be open because the word has come we're getting ready to close so we're getting ready to close john had to hear because in joshua 6 can I shock you? In Joshua 6, the verse 14 to 16. How many of you have heard of the walls of Jericho? But can I suggest to you, the voice of Jericho broke not because of the noise only. Because they did six days of silence before one day of shouting. Learn to be silent when you are walking around your wall. Now, I'm going to say it again. Many people have been taught that it was... The, look at them. Many people have been taught that it was the noise that brought the wall down. No. They shouted one day. They walked in silence for six days. And the second day, they marched around the city once and, and returned to the camp. They did... So did they for how many days? So... Jericho came down by six days of silence. One day of shouting. You cannot shout your way into victory. You sit in silence for six days to generate power. In the silence, what are you doing? You are hearing God. So they heard God for six days to shout what they heard in one day. And the wall came down. They have taught you wrongly. It starts with silence. It ends with noise. I prophesy. I said I prophesy. Six days of silence. One day of noise. Is what brought Jericho down. Don't shout. When you have not walked the wall. Because walking is surveying. Whilst you are walking you are spying. Whilst you are walking you are leaving your mark. Walk over that city. In silence for six days. On the seventh day. The shout will bring the wall down. Walk over that marriage for six days in silence. Don't announce it. Don't publicize it. In six days, I'm walking silently around the wall that has kept my destiny. But on the seventh day, I'm shouting. John the Baptist was in the wilderness of silence until his word came. Don't shout when there is nothing to shout about. Shout when your word comes. I prophesy after tonight. Shout after the word. Shout after the word. Shout after the word. When God said you are getting married now, shout. When God said you are manifesting now, shout. But don't shout before. Walk in silence. Walk in obscurity. Walk in darkness. But when the word comes, shout. 
So Jericho came down. Six days of silence. One day of shouting. Don't just shout your seven days. On the seventh day you'll be tired. God expects you to operate with the wisdom of silence. When the enemy is asking, what is your next move? Silence. 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 When the word comes, I'm shouting and the walls are coming now. Prayer have get ready. Your silence is over because your word has come. My goodness. So they came to John. In John 1 the verse 22. This is the first time John is now talking. They came to John. They said to him. Who are you? Look at the, look at the question. That we may give answer. To those who sent us. From tonight, who has ever has been sent by Satan to inquire who you are, you will answer them rightly. Who is this small boy shouting on Facebook? Who is this small boy building this house? Who is this young girl with this business? It's coming. I don't like your response at all. I said it's coming. The next verse. The next verse. He said, I am. Not I will be. Not I shall be. Not I was. I am. The voice. The voice. Of the one crying in the wilderness. Ladies and gentlemen. Before Jesus will come. Voices must cry. And the voices are not crying in the city. They are crying in the wilderness. He said, I make the way of the Lord. Make the way of the Lord straight. As prophet Isaiah said. So pause. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 40 verse 3. And every point I make here is a prophecy. Isaiah 40. The verse number 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. The reason why God is not in church. Our ways are not prepared. I'm prophesying now. Stay with me. The reason why God is not in your life. Your way is not prepared. God does not go to places. Where the places are not prepared. House of God. We need to prepare now. If God is going to come. He will come to the prepared ways. But the preparation. Does not start in the city. It means we don't need money to prepare. In the wilderness of our affliction, we are still preparing. I said in the wilderness, we are still preparing. He didn't say I'm the money in the wilderness. He said I'm the voice. It means anyone with a voice qualifies to prepare the way of the Lord. The preparation is not with money. The preparation is not with connection. If you have a voice, you can prepare. You can keep shouting. Prayer hub revival is coming. Prepare your way. Young lady revival is coming. <laughs> Prepare your way. It means preparation. Contrary to public opinion. Does not start with money. It starts with a voice. The church has money. But the reason why God is not in the church. Is that the way of God is not prepared. Because for God to come into a place. He doesn't come by money. God does not need transport. God does not need internet. But he needs men. Who can prepare the way. The way is not prepared. With the pictures of pastors on posters. The way is not prepared. With air condition. It's prepared with voices. In the morning before we start service. May voices come and prepare. In the morning before we start worship. May voices voices come and prepare i know you are not responding because you want the easy way out but it's the voices that 
makes the way straight. Money cannot make the way straight. Hey, money cannot make the way straight. Suit and tie cannot make the way straight. Castle and cross cannot make the way straight. What makes the way straight is the voice. It means in the realm of the spirit, the construction agent is not an excavator. The construction agent is not a tractor. The construction agent is not architect. It's a voice. It means if God wants to construct, he will use a voice. Say, man of God, how do you know? In Genesis 11, the Bible said the world came together to build a city and a tower to enter the heavens. When God came, he did not touch the cement. He did not touch the mortar. In Revelation, in Genesis 11, the verse number 6, Genesis 11, 6, the Bible said when God came, he did not touch the cement. He did not touch the concrete. He did not touch the water. He did not touch the scaffolds but he touched something the bible said he touched the language because in the realm of the spirit you don't build by mortar you don't build by brick you build by words so god confused the words and the building sees the reason why you are not building your life is that the enemy has stolen your voice but tonight i prophesy your voice is coming back i said your voice is coming back because in the realm of the spirit we build things by our words tonight may your words not run short i empower your words with fire i empower your words with fire when you speak it shall come to pass god did not create the world with mortar and brick he created it with his voice tonight may you have the voice of creation when you speak it shall come to pass shout i believe Contrary to public opinion, ministry does not move by money. It moves by the right voice. John was not in the city. It means he didn't have a pulpit in New York. He didn't have a pulpit in Abuja. Not in Johannesburg. His pulpit was in the bush. But from the bush, the world had him. I prophesy, as long as you are in a voice, your location does not matter. many people want to have fine location the world does not listen to location creation does not listen to location confusion does not listen to location it only listens to the voice so john said i am the voice to make crooked path straight from tonight any crookedness in your life that voice is making it straight so that you will not fall out of the way so that you will not burst your tire when he said to make the way of the lord bring bring Isaiah, sir. bring Isaiah. john was quoting isaiah he said make it straight a desert a highway how many of you know a street a street is not the same as a highway in the street people people can cross but on the highway and no stopping us now. I came to announce the voice is not building a street, it's building a highway. It means 120 kilometers per hour. We don't stop. I prophesy as the voice is coming into your life, wherever you start, the same speed, you don't stop. On these highways, there will be no speed ramps. When your marriage hits the highway, there will be no speed ramps. When your destiny hits the highway, there will be no speed ramps. I prophesy, enter the highway, shout highway, shout highway. The next verse says, I'm getting ready to close. The next verse says, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places will be smooth. Now watch me. It means by the voice we will deconstruct to construct. I'm saying again. 
by the voice we would deconstruct a mountain and construct a valley into a mountain you didn't hear that a valley is a low place a mountain is a high place we have high place of pornography we have high places of immorality high places of satanic power but tonight by your voice by your voice by your voice we bring every high place down prayer hub is in the valley but god said by your voice you are bringing it up i said you are bringing it up the church is crooked our message is crooked our evangelism is crooked but by the voice we are straightening it so it's the voice that brings down the mountain is the same voice that exhausts the valley from tonight destroy what must be destroyed and build what must be built destroy the shame in your father's house Big back the altar of glory destroy the, the altar of poverty build back the altar of prosperity by your voice every satanic mountain is brought low and every hidden valley is brought up every crooked place is becoming straight your finance is crooked by your voice make it straight your marriage is crooked by your voice make it straight your children are crooked by your voice make it straight if you believe son I do the next verse the glory of the Lord shall be revealed as we rise to our feet God's glory has always been there but the problem why we don't see the glory there are mountains that are still exalted that we have not brought low and there are valleys that are low that we have not brought high until we deconstruct to reconstruct even though the glory is there the glory will not be revealed many of you the glory is over your life but there is a mountain of shame until you deconstruct that mountain and bring the valley of prayer <laughs> come on now i feel something pushing me it means glory must be revealed but before the revelation of glory we must bring the mountains low and exalt the valley prayer is not lively prayer is a valley because it's hidden people are not celebrated because they pray we don't have prayer pageants we have beauty pageants and they sponsor beauty pageants they don't sponsor prayer pageants the church is in the valley they don't have church funding they have funding for weed they have funding for lgbt but they don't have funding for spiritual things because it's a valley but tonight i prophesy the mountain of immorality come down and let the valley of the church be exalted because without that even though there is glory the glory will not be revealed as we clap our hands by the voice in the wilderness in this sea's lesson as we clap our hands may every satanic mountain come down we exalt the valleys of God so that the glory of God will be revealed in your life Clap your hands and pray. By your voice. Come on. Kapala Tatea. Isantala Kapaya. Raka Papaya Tapa. Raka Pala Lalapa. Tontanta. Ika Patata. Raka Tatata. Ika Papa. Rada Papa. Dontanta. Dontanta. Raka Papa. Raka Papa. Ranta Palala. Dontaya. 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 Donta